Hello. I attended an online pitch event today. Uh, I'm part of a group of angel investors and they had an online event today and a couple of companies were pitching and um, they did a really good job. <laughs> they shared a lot of awesome things about their companies. They had a lot of time. They gave them a lot of time so they didn't have to rush, which was great. Um, and then, you know, at the, towards the end of the pitch, the one, I didn't stay for the whole second one, but for the first one, I stayed for the whole thing. And, um, at the very end, the founder said, um, you know, we're raising $500,000. Um, it's a bridge note. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, some of the people, one of the people in, the, in, on the call said, you know, are you, you know, is how is that, how is that going to convert into equity? You know, they were talking about the investment, how much was being raised. They also talked about, you know, what is the minimum of investment per investor, which was $25,000. Um, so this is very common, um, when you're pitching to investors, whether in a group setting, like at a pitch event or, talking to an individual investor, that you're going to talk about the terms of the investment, meaning like how much you're raising, um, what is it that you're offering to investors? You know, there's many different options of what you can offer to investors. I have lots of videos where we talk about all of the different things you can offer to investors. Um, you know, the minimum amount per investor, the timing when you're trying to raise money by, you know, if you're planning an exit, how that's going to work um, and how, you know, how that will result in the investors getting paid. So um, this is very common, but um, you want to be really careful about that. It might seem like totally second nature to do that, um, but in a lot of cases, you might be breaking the law if you do that. Um, in this in fact, like in this particular event, it was technically she was breaking the law <laughs> because um, I assume honest, uh, to be honest, I don't know 100 percent for sure, because I don't know what what uh, securities compliance uh, strategy she's using. But chances are she did break the law because um if she's raising money in the most common way under the law that is most commonly used for this type of pitch, um, she was pitching on a call where they really did not screen to make sure that everyone on the call was accredited. Anyone could join. They publicly advertised the call. You know, there was no limitation on who could be on the call. So she probably broke the law. <laughs> because um, it was basically publicly announcing the fact that she was raising money, talking about the terms of the investment, saying how much she was raising, you know, how much money she needed, all those details. So mo off, very often, if you share that when you're talking to potential investors, whether in a group setting or one-on-one, -on -one, you may be breaking the law. And so... Um, there's two things you can do about that. So number one is you can make sure you have a lawyer that you've worked with who's explained to you and helped you decide, you know, all she, they've explained to you all your different options for securities law compliance, and you've chosen the best option for you. And you're clear on given the option you've chosen, what you're allowed to do, what you're allowed to say in what settings, etc. Or if you haven't yet gotten that legal advice, when you're pitching, you really should not mention the fact that you're raising money, which could be weird because like, why would you be pitching if you weren't raising money? But if you can kind of maintain the fiction as much as possible that you're not, what you're doing is not raising money, you're simply telling people about your business and sharing information about your business which means that you should not talk about how much money you're raising, even the fact that you're raising money, what you're offering to investors, whether it's equity, debt, you know, safe, convertible note. The minute you start talking about all that stuff, you could potentially be breaking the law. So um, 
I really recommend that you're, you know, that you just don't mention it. It's, it's kind of hard to get out of that habit if you're trained to always talk about that part. Um, but you can have an excellent pitch without mentioning that because really all you're trying to do is make sure that the people you're talking to learn about your business, what's special about it, why you, why now, um, et cetera. And uh, if they um, if they like what they hear, they, they can talk to you privately one-on-one, -on -one, in which case it probably will be legal if it's a private one-on-one -on -one conversation. Although in some cases, even that may not be legal. So you eventually you do want to get a lawyer on board. But um, when you're, ha you know, if you're sending things out by email, if you're sending your pitch deck out by email, if you're pitching in a group setting or even in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, try not to talk about the raise itself, how much money you're raising, what you're offering to investors. Just talk about the business and get and see if they're excited. See if they resonate with what you're sharing about the business. If so, then you can follow up and talk about the potential investment, hopefully after you've spoken to a knowledgeable lawyer who can help you make sure you're in compliance with securities law. So I recently created a, a pitch deck template and I purposely set it up in such a way where you there's no slide in there that talks about the fact that you're looking for investors, how much you're raising, what you're offering, because you really don't need to put it in there. Just sharing the information about the business is enough to hopefully get the right people excited and intrigued, and then you can have that conversation outside of the pitch. Um, and it's much safer from a legal perspective to do it that way and to not put that into a document that's going to be shared far and wide because you may be inadvertently breaking the law and that can really set you up for problems down the road. It exposes you to the possibility that your investors could um, sue you, you know, threaten to sue you, demand their money back. It creates a liability, a potential liability for your business that could, you know, go on for, for years that would actually deter people from investing because people don't want to invest in a company that has created a potential legal liability for itself. Um, so if you want to learn more about the pitch deck template that I created where we don't talk about the fact that you're raising money, what you're offering, etc., but you do talk about how awesome your company is, why it's going to solve a major problem in the world and have a positive impact, how um your how it's going to both make money and have a positive impact and fulfill an important mission. Um, you can check out the template I created, which I also have a video that goes along with it and an example of a really great pitch deck that one of my clients did. Um, the link to that is below. But yeah, I just want to make sure people know there's all kinds of um, situations where you might be asked to share about your investment opportunity and the for example, there's many pitch events where the organizers of the event will say, yeah, share, you know, tell them what, you know, how much you're raising, what you're offering, et cetera. And if you just blindly listen to those instructions, you might be breaking the law. So don't feel like you have to do what the event organizers tell you to do. Um, just don't mention the fact that you're raising money. Just talk about your business, how awesome it is, and then have private one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, ideally with some knowledge about the legal limitations around that. All right. I hope this is helpful.